her words were just like atom bomb for Adam Aziz. And this particular event is has a sort of connection where America drops three atom bomb on Nagasaki and Hiroshima. So this is this particular event has also some sort of connection uh, in the fiction. Another important thing is that India happens to have a very good relationship in the past with America, but that relationship lasts for a short period. In the past, America would have offered his help to India, and so there was a mutual understanding between America and India. And this mutual understanding is elaborated in the fiction by Salim Sinai. Salim Sinai is showing Salim Sinai falls in love with an American girl and the name of that girl is Evie Burns. So for time being Salim Sinai develops a sort of infatuation for Evie Burns and both of them they live together for a couple of days but this love affair doesn't get consummated into marriage. So this is this event can also be interpreted as how India has developed love affair with America in the past. If I have to talk about the post independence film industry then there is one more point in the fiction that Salim Sinai and her sister they were the frequent visitors of the movies and that is also during the month of Ramzan. So during this time we can see that children were fascinated by film industry. Today the same situation prevails in India. The young generation is mad after these movies. So Bollywood has also its implication in the fiction. Directly or indirectly these you know Bollywood industry has been interwoven into the framework. Now Salim Sinai. Salim Sinai can be projected as the modern India. Why? Because Salim Sinai, a biologically speaking, there was an there was an Englishman who was departing India. He develops extramarital relationship with one of the Indian poor woman, women. And he seduces that Indian woman and that woman remains pregnant and she gives birth to a baby that is Salim actually biologically speaking. So biologically Salim's father belongs to England and mother belongs to India. So Salim is you know a sort of combination of modern India who is somewhat westernized by the British lifestyle. This is what we can see that Salim Sinai is the representative of modern India. Uh, this, in that way, these are the events with the help of which we can say that Salman does this midnight children is a political allegory or you can say the allegory of the history of the nation. If we have to examine the fiction from the postmodern point of view. It can also be regarded as the postmodern fiction. Then you will have to see what are the features of the postmodern fiction. Postmodern fiction always blurs the genetic differences. It can neither be called a historical novel, it can neither be called a political novel, it can neither be called a novel which is based on a moral teaching, it can neither be called a novel which documents the history of India but all combine in one. So this is the first feature of the postmodern fiction that being a postmodern text Midnight Children amalgamates all the genetic differences. So we have you know interpretations and interpretations. Another important thing is that a postmodern fiction always makes use of myth. The raw material has been taken from mythology. The very beginning of the novel sets the tone. 
where we are familiarized with the extremely beautiful naturally seen scenery and that setting of the novel is Kashmir. Now Kashmir is considered to be the paradise of India. The name of Adam Aziz is taken from the story of mythical story of Eve and Adam. Eve and Adam happens to meet in the paradise of in the garden of paradise and here also Adam Aziz happens to see Nasim Ghani in Kashmir. So the background genetically speaking the myth of the Christian myth of Eve and Adam has been materialized. This is one of the features of uh, postmodern fiction. The third thing is that postmodern fiction always you know makes use of fantasies and this is the reason why we can say that midnight children is a magic realism salman Rushdie has made use of magic realism everything is everything and anything is possible on this earth if we talk that midnight children is a magic realism or salman Rushdie has made use of magic realism then sometimes the story keeps on shifting from one particular setting to another and from second to the third. Formerly the focus was on the urban atmosphere. Now the postmodern fiction in the postmodern fiction the focus has been changed. There is a gradual shift from countryside to the cosmopolitan cities. So when we examine the places mentioned in the novel like Amritsar, then Delhi, then many other places. All of them, they are the metropolitan cities. And this is, uh, I should say, one of the features of the postmodern fiction. Postmodern fiction does not have a neatly constructed plot. It will have a loose narrative. Here also we will find that the novel doesn't have a neat plot construction. It has welded together many stories in the same, uh, in the main plot. Another important facet of the postmodern fiction is that in postmodern fiction, we will find the element of subjectivity. The opening of the novel makes us familiar with the narrative technique. Once upon a time, I was born at Dr. Nalikal's nursing home. I begins, the story begins with I. It means it helps the writer to involve into the novel autobiographical element. And the story has subjective note. Another point of comparison is that during the time of the publication of Midnight Children, the approximate population of India was 630 millions. And at the end of the fiction, Salim Sinai says that his body seems to be tearing into pieces into how many pieces 630 million species and today if we look at india free india we will find that we will find that india seems to be divided or fragmented into pieces on the basis of language we have divisions on the basis of religions we have divisions and on the basis of territorial boundaries also we have divided India into many fragmentations. But let me tell you the fact that this particular fiction can be read and reread. The only thing is that it will have multiplicity of meanings. As Rola Ba has said, that we live in the world of plurality. This is one of the meanings of the fiction. This cannot be the meaning of the fiction. So, I will make 
quite clear to the readers that this is one of the point of view from which we have tried our level best to assess this fiction right i with this i conclude my speech thank you for listening to me and uh, thank you for cooperating me in all the ways